It is two o'clock and a very good afternoon to everybody. And thank you very much for joining us for this press conference with um, Protea's Captain Dean Alga. Um, as usual, I'd just like to remind everyone to please keep your monitors muted and to please re-mute yourself immediately after having asked a question. Um, can we stick to one question per person, please? Until we circle back, we will do our best to ensure that everybody gets a question. And um, for those who haven't joined us, please ensure that you put your request to ask a question on the chat panel. We do not recognize raised hands. If you can just please put your name and your intention to ask the question. We'll start with Fados, then Tinas, Nathan, and Mark Leeson. Fados, please go ahead. Thanks, Abukazi. Hi, Dean. Uh, Dean, obviously we know that there'll be a, a forced change with um, Kuni out, but is there anything else that you guys have thought of in terms of combinations that you can share with us? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we would be silly not to try and look at other combinations going forward. Uh, so the last two, three days since the uh, the test ended, uh, we we have obviously been chatting around the possibilities of a few uh, changes. Um, yeah, obviously Carl Verain comes in for for Quinny, um, which was always something that we were aware of and we'd already planned around that. Um, but yeah, we haven't just uh, made up our minds just yet with regards to what other changes uh, we might possibly uh, enforce uh, starting tomorrow. How's it, Dean? Um, just uh, following up on that, have you guys made a decision yet on whether to play a spinner or not? Um, I'm, I'm always a, a, a fan of having a, a frontline spin bowler. Um, I think Kesh of late has, uh, has, has put up his hand and he, he kind of still deserves his, his spot within the side. Um, of late, playing a few uh, domestic games and, uh, and, and played uh, the test series against Australia. Um, the ball spun quite a bit still at Wanderers. Um, just looking at the conditions for now. Um, I would I would still think Kesh would retain his spot. Um, he didn't have a horrible game previous game, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm still extremely um, uh, pro having a spinner just from a stability point of view. He's uh, he's someone that's you know, I can I can throw the ball to, and he can always uh, try and bring down the run rate and stabilize the bowling a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, as it stands now, I'm pretty sure Kesh will still retain his spot. Nathan? Uh, um, first, I, I would like to congratulate Sips on a, in advance for the, the ring belt tomorrow at the Boring. Um, and then to Dean, um, obviously you had time now to speak with the management after the first test, and obviously it was a bit disappointing. But what have you guys spoke about and obviously looking to improve overall um, for the second test against India? Because obviously you guys do want to equalize the series. No, no doubt. Um, I think um, we've had a few very good conversations since the, the first test uh, finished. Um, I mean, we, we had to try and break or break the game up and uh, and give us a, a better option going into the Wanderers game. I think the message that we've obviously come out with is is one of we don't need to panic as a, as a unit. Um, I still think we've got a lot of capable players uh, within the side. Beard as a May, they're quite inexperienced, but they also have to take the responsibility within the, the, the positions that they are given. Um, they are by no means uh, bad cricketers because of one or two innings with a bat, for instance. Um, and backing them is still an extremely important thing going forward in test cricket. That's how you build and grow your test system. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of conversations. Sure, the batters have, have had their talks. And I think we're trying to break it down that we try and play the most basic uh, cricket again. Uh, adopt the basic fundamentals, the disciplines within test match batting. Um, and obviously with the ball, uh, I think there were still a few areas that we could fine tune, uh, maybe making them play a little bit more with the, with the new ball, especially if, we, if we're bowling up front. Um, so yeah, there were definitely areas that we, that we uh, spoke about and obviously um, uh, chatted to the, the, the different respected groups. Thank you, Nathan. Dean, can I, sorry. Uh, Dean, can I ask you your reaction to uh, Quinton's decision? Um, did you see it coming? And what do you think it means just in terms of, you know, talented guys like that giving up the, the, the red ball game for the, the big bucks of the white ball game, as it were? You think it's a, a dangerous precedent maybe for test cricket? Um, well, from my point of view, I was, I was pretty shocked. Uh, I wasn't aware of uh, this was going to happen. Um, 
but sitting down with Quinny that 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 evening and and him obviously explaining to me the the reason for it, I, I very much respect his decision um, and fully understand the the space he's in at the moment. Um, hopefully, it doesn't come back one day and he and he still wishes he was part of our our Red Bull uh, setup. Uh, but in saying that, um, I don't think it's—I don't think his decision is going to jeopardize Test cricket going forward. Um, his reasons are his reasons, and uh, as mentioned uh, in a few interviews already around uh, his his choice to to retire, we we as a group we fully respect it, and and we as a group have to get over it and move on now. Um, the game moves on. Uh, when guys retire, I've been fortunate enough to. <laughs> Experienced quite a few big uh, South African cricketers retire of late, and uh, one thing I've realised is the game of cricket continues. Uh, you're not a, you're not a mortal, and the game definitely doesn't stop for you. I can tell you that. Um, so us as a players group, we kind of had, had to get over it quickly, and, and still and kind of understand and respect the the position Quinny is in. Thank you so much, Sips. Uh, afternoon, Dean. Um, I just want to go back to the game now. What do you guys feel that the Wanderers pitch is going to offer you as a team on the batting front, seeing that that could have been the major problem the last time around? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think just looking at the surface, the, the surface uh, will be playing a lot better than what I, I think it has in, in recent times. Um, they have a new groundsman now in Evan, and I think he's trying to make it a little bit more batting friendly or a little bit more of a, of a, of a better cricket wicket um, that, that creates good test cricket. Um, again, uh, irrespective of how the wickets play and us as batters, uh, we have to put our hands up and we have to take, we have to take responsibility and ownership of our positions that's, that that we've been given. Um, and and yeah, hopefully, hopefully it works that way. I mean, we've been echoing a lot of positivity throughout the group, um, as mentioned earlier. Uh, one or two innings doesn't make uh, a cricketer a bad player, for instance. Um, so yeah, and you're only one one knock away from from being back in form. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of positives for us going into the into the next test tomorrow. Um, yeah, and hopefully we can adopt adopt the language that we've been speaking in the last few days. Hi, Dean. Uh, there has been some talk about uh, playing seven specialist batsman. Um, presumably conditions do uh, dictate whether that, that's something you do or not. But uh, having said what you said about Keshav Maharaj, is, would you be comfortable with just four frontline bowlers, three seamers and a spinner? Or, or um, does the Wanderers not look like it's going to be supportive of that? Um, yeah, good, good question, Ken. But um, again, uh, I go back to the way Kesh has been at, uh, as a test player for us. Um, I know sometimes you're inclined to go horses for courses, but I think he's, he's one that adapts to whatever conditions that's in front of him. Um, I entrust that he is a, a very, very smart and clever cricketer, and, and his record of late speaks for itself. Um, but saying that, I still think having a left arm spinner bowling to the Indian batters who have 10 right-hand batters as well. They only have one left-hander in Rishabh Pant. Um, it's something for us to, to utilize as well. Um, tactically, we can, we can always be a lot better, um, but still from a stability point of view, um, Kesh still, uh, still has an extremely big role for us to play in, in, in this test series. Talfid? Hello, Dean. Um, You've, uh, you knew before um, the end of the test match in Centurion that you wouldn't have Quinton around for the rest of the series. And of course, it is in the past. Um, but you've just said you were shocked to find out about his retirement. And of course, there's not much time between that match and this one. So are you a little worried that, you know, the Oaks might be going onto the field thinking, my goodness, Quinton de Kock has retired? You know, do you think there'll be some kind of hangover or you're going to have to do a job as a captain to get their heads into the game? No, I don't think there will be that because uh, I mentioned to us as a group that the game moves on and, and there's responsibility for us as us as the rest of the squad to, to carry and conduct ourselves like uh, international players. 
we still have to be extremely professional around this. Um, we still have a test series to level and hopefully win in Cape Town. Um, so I don't think there's going to be a hangover of um, a shock uh, retirement by Quinny. Um, it is what it is, and uh, rightly res we respect it. And uh, I think the players respect the environment as well. We realise that we've had quite a few setbacks over the over recent times, and uh, I think this is just another one that we need to we need to obviously uh, be clever around, and obviously we need to get over because um, the, the game moves on, as I've mentioned before. And uh, I don't see I don't see this affecting the players of of one of having a still being shocked around around his retirement. Up next is Grant for those Niharika and Sanele. Thanks, Dean. Compliments of the new year to you. Thank you. Just in terms of the batting order, um, how do you see that taking shape? Obviously, yourself and, and Tembo were, were obdurate and, and good in, in the middle order, but it seems to be a bit of a concern with the lineup. How do you, how do you see it? Again, uh, players have to take responsibility. Um, you can talk and talk until uh, there's actions. And uh, I, I did say to the guys the other day that I, I, need, to see, I need to see actions now. Um, Talk is cheap if you don't uh, if you don't have the reaction from those kind of talks. And as blunt as it is, I'm afraid Test cricket is a hard and ruthless environment. And if you want to survive and be successful in this in this format, you you need to you need to kind of ask yourself the hard questions and you need to you need to respond on those on those questions. Um, it's always been the culture and language that I was brought up with. And it's something that I, I want the other guys to also think about. I'm pretty sure they, they're also disappointed in the way things happened in the previous game. Um, but saying that, they're not bad players. They, they definitely haven't become any weaker as a, from a cric cricketing point of view. They just need to be mentally a little bit more switched on and, and, and understand the synthetic cricket is bloody, bloody tough. And uh, you've, you're facing some of the best bowlers in the world now. Um, now you need to put on your big boy pants and you need to, you need to react to, to what's happened. Uh, Dean, I just realized when you spoke about retirements that pretty much since your debut, um, every year there's been a, a big retirement. So, <laughs> yeah. so I'm just wondering, like, you know, when you, when you see that kind of thing happening, do you sometimes look around and think like, flip, you know, who's, who's going to go next? Or just how do you deal with knowing that this happens so often? So Dave, I can't answer that question because um, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have had any of those guys retire around. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one. But again, retirements are part and parcel of the game. Um, I don't think um, I don't think it's a kind of thing that you can control because it's ultimately out of your hands as a, as a player if you're not making those decisions uh, for your career. Um, it's disappointing. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, Quinny not having Quinny around again is is, is disappointing for me, and uh, and it's something I need to get over because I know there's a lot more other talented players within our squad, within our system that we that that I need to give a lot of attention to now, and uh, and that's perfectly fine. Um, as tough it, as tough as as it is, it's it's just it's one of those things that you just need to you need to crack on with, and you need to get over it as quick as possible. Uh, hi, Captain. Uh, first of all, a very happy new year to you. Thank you. And uh, my question for you is that in the Centurion Test, we saw KL Rahul get a big century, uh, while you and uh, Temba were stuck in the half century. So uh, ahead of the second test, how big is the importance of getting those big hundreds when one of you gets set? And if there have been any conversations in the batting group or with the head coach about how to get those big hundreds? Yeah, I mean, uh, you need big hundreds in test cricket uh, to compete and win. Um, we're very much aware of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, KL's hundred was 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 great for India, and it kind of set them up for the rest of the game. Um, so trust me, I'm very disappointed that we had the the two fifties within the test, knowing that um, I'm a guy that can come in and also score big hundreds, and uh, that's that's also my job that I need to I need to look after. Um, and then Temba as well. Temba needs to needs to push on. He needs to stop getting those good fifties and 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 start getting those hundreds again. Because um, we know how far it goes for from a team point of view, with regards to setting up a team and also taking away a lot of time in the game as well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely an area that uh, I thought was maybe the turning point within the first test. 
And also the area I think is still going to be quite important for uh, the next few. Thank you so much again, Sibs. Uh, Dean, there's been quite a lot of mixed reaction with regards to um, Quentin de Kock's retirement these past days after the game uh, in the South African public. I just wanted to check with you if you can give the public a bit of an insight into the, the cricket environment professionally, especially now during the pandemic with regards to the amount of time that you guys travel, um, the toll that it takes on you mentally and physically, maybe then the public can understand it a little bit more as to why this is such a difficult thing to do. Um, people think it's uh, glamorous and you live in massive houses and drive nice cars um, and you get free clothing. That is part of part of it. But the, the, the flip side around this is it's extremely uh, demanding on personal lives. Uh, if you're in a relationship, it's extremely difficult because we spend a lot of time away from home. Um, as it works, as it is now, um, if you play white ball cricket, you're away from home for maybe two months playing IPL. And if that's all you do, um, you got 10 months at home for you to, to be around your loved ones. Um, if you play three or four test series, that's potentially six to eight months away from home in a year. Um, so I can understand uh, the, the, the toll of, of it on, on yourself. And especially now we, we live in these bubbles and um, the people that construct our bubbles are, are trying their utmost to try and make it a lot more player friendly now um, by giving us luxuries to maybe live in a hotel on a golf course, just knowing that a lot of guys like to play golf. And, and that's just one example of guys having, having a way out just to clear their minds. And uh, um, yeah, of late, it has, been, it has been a bit of a struggle for quite a lot of guys um, because of what's happened around the world with COVID. And uh, putting guys into the bubble is, is, is not easy. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard work. And uh, this is by no means a, a bit or moan. It's, a, it's, it's honestly the, 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 the truth and the reality around it is we spend a lot of time away from home and uh, we still love what we do. But um, it is tough on a few guys. And um, if you have 19 or 20 players now with your six to eight management, each person is unique and different in their own ways. Their personalities obviously deal with it a lot differently. Um, so yeah, we got to respect those, those kind of decisions and uh, the different personnel and personalities we have within the squad. Um, yeah, and, and as I said, each guy, each guy responds to it a, a lot differently. Um, guys, we're going to have to wrap up. The last three questions <laughs> um, will be Stuart, Dennis and Anush. Um, thanks, Supercarsi. Good afternoon, Dean. Um, between you and Aiden, you, you know, you guys have individually performed quite well in the last 12 months uh, in the limited test matches that South Africa's played. I, I, I was wondering, in these conversations that you've had, you, you guys know each other quite well. How do you go about discussing and then planning to kind of do, do it better as a combination so that, you know, the, the guy coming in at three isn't doing it as early as, as KP has had to do it the last few games? Stu, I think it's one of those things where Aiden and I don't have to speak about it anymore because we know where we know the responsibility and the and the burden we that 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 uh, comes with opening the batting that we need to look after the new ball. Uh, with us looking after the new ball, that allows our number three, four, and five, and number six to obviously come in and be as natural as possible. Um, so of late, we've we've played under a few relatively rough conditions i would say batting conditions but in, in saying that it's no excuse we we need to we need to be better we need to obviously get those partnerships uh, going again like like we have had in the past when we when we first started opening uh, the batting with each other um so yeah i don't even i don't even think we have to have those conversations because we know as as a as an opening pair we need to we need to um get us off to a, a better start just to give the guys a little bit more um of a, of, a, of a clearer mindset going in when, when it's their turn to bat. Dennis? Dean, could there be um, a shift or two in the batting order? What's your, what's your thinking around that? I don't see it happening just yet, Dennis. Um, it was definitely something that we spoke about. Um, I think that was one of the big issues of us to, to, to talk about. Um, but I don't think it's going to change just yet. I know the selectors 
still want to give guys uh, opportunities at, at certain positions and got to respect their decisions going forward. Um, but yeah, we definitely did have those, uh, those, those kind of talks uh, the last few days. Dean, uh, what kind of talks or session or uh, you as a captain have with your players knowing that heading into the second game, you guys are 1-0 down in the test series? I don't think I can actually um, say the words that I said recently, but um, yeah, we definitely have uh, a lot of hard chats. I think the hard chats that we've had uh, the last day or two have been extremely constructive for us going forward from a... Uh, awareness point of view from a building point of view um so yeah we we've definitely have had or i have definitely had a lot of uh talks with the guys even if it's a from a personal capacity i'll take the guys one side and uh uh just try and just chat see the guy if the guy's in a good space give him a little bit of affirmation just to uh, put him in a better mindset mind, mind space or mindset um, but yeah, there have been there have been a few conversations uh, going around with regards to me speaking to to the group and also speaking to individual players. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks, Dean. Good run. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. much.